You know, Stan, sometimes you just want to make sure things are really clean. That is so true, Kate. PGE recommends washing most of your laundry in cold water. But how well does that work when it, you know, really matters? In the dishwashing episode, we answered the question, is it more energy efficient to wash your dishes by hand or to use the dishwasher? But we're not going to spoil that for you. You'll have to check out the video on the internet. Today, we're going to look at if using cold water is effective in getting your laundry clean. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing we can all agree that using cold water is more efficient since it doesn't require any energy to heat the water. It really just comes down to, does it get the job done? And what happens in the winter when it gets really cold? So, what we're going to do now is we're going to stain a bunch of napkins, wash them all at different temperatures, and find out just how much temperature matters in getting laundry clean. Right. And we're going to start at 140 degrees, because that's the temperature that many hot water heaters are set at. Then we're going to drop to 120 degrees, which is the temperature that PGE recommends you set your hot water heater at in order to avoid scalding and still be energy efficient. And then from there, we'll go down to 70 degrees, which mm -hmm. is about the temperature of your cold water during the summer, and then 40 degrees, which will be about the cold water temperature during the winter. And finally, we're going to see how cold we can really go. So, we'll be washing a total of five test loads all together. Now, Kate, can mm -hmm. you tell me what's significant about that? That is the average number of loads a typical family does in five days. How do you know that? Lucky guess. All right. Okay, let's go stain some laundry. Okay, we're gonna use six napkins for each test load. Right, and we're gonna stain each napkin with one of four types of stains. Mm -hmm. Protein stains, like this pudding. Fats and oils, which is what the corn oil is for. Tannin stains, like this wine and then dye stains, like this instant drink mix. Now, is that it? No, we're also going to stain one with all four. That's what this one is. That's why it looks so nice. <laughs> <laughs> then we're going to leave one napkin completely unstained. That way we can see if there's any temperature that has trouble keeping the stains from moving around in the wash. And we should also let the stains sit for a while just to make sure they're in there good. Yeah, that's a really good idea. all of our stains ready to go there. Awesome. But I have a question. Mm -hmm. The water that comes out of our tap is nowhere near 33 degrees. How are we ever going to get it cold enough? Well, Kate, I'm glad you asked. Mm. Check out what I made. Whoa! You is made that? Is that awesome or what? Okay, that is pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. But I don't understand. Why is it it's bubbling? Well, I was only able to get the regular ice down to 40 degrees, so I added dry ice. Okay, and it worked. Well, I was able to get that down to 36 degrees, so we're going to have to make that work. So it really didn't work. Well, it was pretty close. That's only 3 degrees. All right, we'll make it work. Yeah. Well, I don't understand. How are we going to pre-treat in cold water? Oh, okay. Well, we'll be using the uh, detergent manufacturer's instructions for pre-treating. Okay. Soaking some of the stains while letting the detergent sit for a while on others. The only difference is we'll be using the cold water version of the detergent for everything below our 120 degree test. All right. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Which you got that way below 120 degrees. Exactly. Can I open it? Yep. <gasps> That's really cool. Pretty cool, huh? Okay, five stains, six napkins each. Here are the results. Hmm, some of these didn't get clean at all. Well, yeah, those are the ones that we stained but didn't wash, so we had somebody to compare them to. Oh, right. Well, Kate, I gotta say that these are all looking pretty clean. Yeah, I mean, really, they came clean with just a few small exceptions. It looks like we've still got some wine stains left. Yeah, the wine didn't come out of the two coldest settings. Right, and it also didn't come out of the coldest combo stain settings, so I guess wine is particularly temperature sensitive? I think so. I think if you have a wine stain, you're going to need to go with a little bit warmer temperature. Or you might find some other way of pre-treating that works very well in cold water. We also had one other outlier that was interesting. The oil stain in the combo didn't come out at the second hottest setting. Hmm. 
That is weird. Mm -hmm. Well, I guess much like our dishwashing tests, your mileage may vary. Right. I think if you start at the coldest setting, working your way up warmer, if the stain doesn't come out, you're pretty good then. But you can always rinse in cold. Right. You know what else I found really interesting? <laughs> a lot of these stains came out with just pre-treating. Yeah, I was surprised by that too, especially since we didn't use anything special with pre-treating, we just used detergent and water. Okay, so the cold water got the stains out almost as well as the warm water, but hmm, are your clothes getting clean clean? Ah, you're talking about viruses and bacteria. And bed bugs and <laughs> dust mites and just all of that. Ugh. Well, the CDC says that the risk of getting disease from your laundry is negligible. But if you're still concerned, you might want to consider this, that unless you're adding any pesticides or antibacterial additives to the wash, the hot water setting may be still too cold to be effective. It is? Yep, but no worries because all of that's taken care of in the dryer, which oh. runs long enough and hot enough to kill all of those bad things. Okay, well wait a minute then. Are you saying that I shouldn't hang dry my laundry? Nope, you can do that too. <gasps> it turns out sunlight pretty much handles a lot of these issues also, but I think that drying is an issue for another show. Yeah, that was very subtle. Yeah, I know, that's how I work. Well, we've learned a lot about laundry by doing these tests. You might also want to visit our website to get more information. Okay, so remember how last time we saw a dishwasher that washed a ton of dishes all at one time? Yep. Okay, I have something else to show you. Come on. Sweet. Here at this industrial laundry facility, they wash 30 tons of laundry every day. <laughs> this is the 6450EM. It washes about 600 pounds of laundry in about an hour. That is the amount of laundry an average family of four generates in about a month. This is so cool. Let's load it up. <laughs> All right. I don't think anything can top that. Yeah, I know. But if you happen to know of a way to clean a ton of clothes. Several several tons of clothes. Right. If you happen to know of a way to clean several tons of clothes faster than that, send us a video of it. Yeah, and if you've got a burning energy efficiency question, visit the website, send us an email or a video response, or leave your suggestion in the comment section. Oh, and if you have any tips on how to get wine stains out of clothes at really cold temperatures, send us that too. Yeah, because I totally have a pair of pants that need rescuing from a wine stain. Clumsy. Mm -hmm.